Document automation enables you to put repetitive and time-consuming tasks on autopilot. Now, this frees up time for your team, but also reduces the risk for human error. Whether generating invoices, contracts, offers, or reports, now might be the perfect time for you to explore automation in your business. So in this video, we're going to show you a practical approach to automating your document workflows using two popular automation tools, Zapier and Make. Hi there, I'm Alex Knowles from automationhelpers.com and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. We all know that preparing, sending, signing, approving, reviewing, and chasing up documents is all a part of business. But with readily available tools like Zapier and Make, we can put these repetitive and mundane tasks on autopilot. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use both Make and Zapier to set up routine document tasks to both save time and reduce errors. Here, I have an example Google folder, Acme, as we'll be looking at creating and managing documents in our Google Drive. Now, for those watching that are wanting to automate their Microsoft documents, you can still follow this video for an understanding of how to set up a basic document automation, but I highly recommend checking out Microsoft Power Automate. The reason that we are looking at both Zapier and Bake is because they are the two most popular automation tools available. They're specifically designed to connect your different platforms, but they slightly differ. Zapier is known for its straightforward, user-friendly interface, making it the go-to for quick automations and teams newly introduced to automations. It's ideal for setting up basic workflows without much hassle. Make, on the other hand, shines as a platform for slightly more complex automations. It offers extensive flexibility, making it ideal for users who need deeper control over sophisticated workflows. So how do you start automating your document workflows? Well, step number one is to sign up for either Zapier or Make. Now, both platforms offer a free plan, so sign up and follow along. Here, we'll start firstly with a quick run through of automating document tasks using Zapier. An automated workflow within Zapier is referred to as a Zap. So let's create one. I've got here my document automation folder, which I'm gonna jump into, and we can either create a Zap here or from here. So we'll select Zaps, and then it's gonna create an automated workflow. Now, within any automated workflow, we will have a trigger event that launches the workflow, and then actions or steps that occur after. So we need to decide what is going to be that trigger event that tells Zapier, hey, we need a document to be created. Now, this trigger event could be any number of things that occur in your business workflow. It could be when a new row is added to your Google Sheet, a task in your Airtable, the status for that has changed, or perhaps a new message has been received on Slack. Let's keep the example simple. We'll look firstly at Zapier and then Make. So we'll look at the Google Sheets example. When a new client has been added to my client tracker, we want to create a Google Doc. We can lean on Zapier's AI feature, Copilot, to actually create a template for us or a head start. What we can do is we can prompt like we would any LLM. We'll ask when a new row is added to Google Sheet, create a Google Doc. Then we'll hit enter on that prompt and await for Copilot to work its magic. Suggesting an outline. We've got here, new spreadsheet row, create document from text. So what we could do is add these steps directly into Zap, and then you would just need to connect your Google accounts for each step, of course, and the trigger event. But let's look at creating this from scratch. So we know that the trigger event here, this is going to be when a new row is added to our Google Sheet. So you want to search for the app, maybe it's Google Sheets for your automated workflow. Then you'll need to connect your app. Perhaps it's Airtable, ClickUp, SmartSuite, Slack. The same flow of setting up an automated workflow continues. So we'll have here the trigger event and we're going to select that a spreadsheet row has been updated. I've already connected my account, so you'll need to go ahead and do that. Then select continue and it's time to configure. 
So of course, we'll need to select what spreadsheet this is for. So I've got a client tracker living in my Acme Google Drive over here. As we can see, we can see we've got clients here and in clients, we've got the client tracker. But let's jump back into the Zap. We'll then need to select the worksheet. Well, that's just the first sheet one. Then we can select continue. We'll want to then test this to see how the data is pulled through. So test your trigger event and wait for some data to arrive. Then we can continue setting up this workflow. And we've had some data pulled through. We've got Sir Michael Johnson sales rep. So we know that the data is coming through correctly. Let's continue on with our flow. Next, creating a document in Google Docs. So we're going to select the action or the next step here. And we'll just select Google Docs or you could search for. And what we're going to do is select the action event. We saw in Copilot that it wanted to generate a doc from text. But what we actually want to look at is generating a doc from a template. Now, this is a great automated workflow for when you are generating recurring documents. Think employee onboarding, client onboarding, reports, reviews, those sort of things that someone has to manually jump in and recreate each time. No, let's automatically generate them. Here we can see in our client Google Drive for our dummy company, Acme Co, that we've got an onboarding checklist, a project roadmap, and a welcome packet. We can easily use these as templates so that we can automatically generate a new one for each client once they start onboarding. If we just jump into welcome packet, we'll notice that we've got some curly brackets here. These are placeholders. So this is going to be the data that we replace with the actual data of our client. We've got here company, client name, introduce the sales manager. Let's replace this with sales. And we'll just leave it at that for this example. Then we'll just quickly rename this template so that we know this is the template. Jump into our zap and then we'll continue our automated workflow setup. So we'll need to select the template document, which we know we've got that welcome packet there. So we'll select that. Then what we'll be able to do We'll notice that those placeholders have come available. We've got company, client name, sales, which we just created together. But firstly, the new document name. We'll call this welcome packet four, and then we're able to directly pull in the data from our Google Sheet record or row. So we'll select this icon here, and let's just pull in the company name. So there'll be the welcome packet for retail mark for that example data we pulled in earlier. The sharing preference, how do we want people to be able to see this? Anyone with link, anyone with link and edit. Let's go, actually, no, let's keep that as view. Moving on, then we'll also include the company for that title, pulling that in. The client name, we'll want to include both the first name, ensuring a space as well, and the last name, and then finally, just sales there. So if we scroll, we should have a particular email source sales team, Alice Johnson. There we go. Sweet. Then we'll hit continue and we'll want to test this step, but we can actually take it further rather than just simply generating a document. We could also add another step after this to send the document to the client. So if we were just to quickly add a Gmail step and it would be send an email, continue. Of course, you'll need to connect your Gmail account. Then we can actually pull in the data directly from our client tracker, include a subject and attach the Google Doc that we just generated. It's super easy to set up and there's so much more that we can do with Zapier. But now that we've had a look at Zapier, let's jump into Make and see how the UI and interface differs and how easy it is to set up this automated workflow. The first difference is that rather than calling it a Zap, Make refers to an automated workflow as a scenario. So we're in a document automation folder. Let's create a new scenario. Now that we've created a scenario, let's set it up. Okay. So we're gonna use Google Sheets as that trigger event. So, whoops, we'll search Google Sheets. 
and then we'll need to select the trigger event, which will be watch new rows, because we want our automated workflow to go when a new row is added. Next, you'll need to add your Google account and verify and authorize. Once you've done that, you can continue. Here, I'll ensure I've got the right one selected, and then we're able to determine our search method. We've got by path, we've also got by all and entering that particular spreadsheet manually. Let's go via path, we've got my drive, and then we'll just need to select folder by folder. So we'll see here, we've got Acme and Co, then we need to select clients, waiting for that to load. There we go, and now we'll be able to select the tracker. And then from then we'll need to select the worksheet. There we go, sheet one. Table contains headers. Yes, it does. As we know, we've got first name, last name, continued on. Then we've got the row with headers. Yep, we're just gonna leave it as it is. Then we've got the limit. So the maximum number of results or data to be worked with during one cycle. So if more than one row is being updated, we're currently saying, hey, only take two. And let's continue on. Now that we've connected that, rather than testing our trigger like we did in Zapier, let's manually grab data from the spreadsheet. So we could pull in a row specifically through the ID, but then you'd have to work out how to grab that. It's much easier to go choose manually. And then it's gonna bring in, as we can see, all of those options there. Now we went with Michael Johnson in the last one, so let's follow with him as well. And then after we've connected our Google Sheets to watch new rows, it's time to add the next step, which we know will be creating a Google Docs. So if we select Google Docs up here, we'll see the options we have available. Create a document or create a document from template. We know we need to select this one for our example. So you'll need to select your Google account or add it if you haven't already. I'm just gonna select continue and reauthorize the connection directly through Google Docs. Waiting for that bad boy to load. And now we're back in, so we're able to search for our Google document, our template. So we'll select the document ID here. We'll click here to choose the file and this will load those options and we should simply be able to see it at the top. Here we've got that template welcome pack that we created earlier together. Sorry, welcome packet. And this will load those placeholders in a very similar way that it did with Zapier. Here we can see the values or the placeholders. Now, all we need to do is select the box here and we'll be able to see how our data is being pulled over from Google Sheets. Same process that we follow with Zapier. All we need to do is map each of the correlating fields or cells or columns over. We got client name, let's go first name, space last name, sales, the sales team, and the title of the document. What do we say? We'll say welcome packet. Then we're going to use the for, include that, company. And then here we're able to set the new drive location as well as the new document location. So I don't imagine that we want to have all of our clients' documents living here directly within the whole clients folder. Instead, let's create one for, we'll just say Michael Johnson. I think it's React was the company. We'll create that. We'll quickly jump back in. And then we should see that option becomes available. If we jump into Acme Co, of course, following the path again from here, if we jump into clients, and then from clients, we should see Michael Johnson. There we go. But instead of following that practice, what you would want to do would be to create a module or a step before the Google Docs step. So I'll just delete this. And then actually create a Google folder in your Google Drive. So we'll select Google Drive here. And here we have the option to create a folder. Then we would follow that same process of mapping our data from our Google Sheets or our Airtable project, whatever we decided to use as the trigger event. This too, of course, is possible in Zapier. If we jump in here, we can easily add a step before the Google Doc creation and then 
follow the same process. Automation and specifically document automation doesn't have to be overwhelming. Start with the simple steps. Get used to the automation tools and see how far you can push the limits. If you need help automating parts of your business, don't hesitate to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com. Our team of experts are offering a free 30-minute consultation. So book yours today.